What does guitar amp EQ do? In this video, I wanna talk about what EQ is, I wanna talk about how it works, I want to demonstrate it for you, but most importantly, I want you to come away with two simple rules that helps you to use it right now. Hey, I'm Derek at 5 Minute Music, and I have over 25 years experience playing the electric guitar, working with students on how to use their amps, doing some live sound, doing some mixing, playing in bands, and I'm excited to dig into EQ because it's so important for you to understand this and use it well to get the guitar sound that you want. So let's get started. First of all, what is EQ? EQ stands for equalization, and it's basically a volume knob for a specific frequency. Now, your overall volume knob, when you turn your volume up, takes all of your sound and turns it up or down. But the EQ knobs are volume knobs for specific frequencies. So if it says bass, that's your lower frequencies. And if you turn that knob up, it just turns the bass up. If it says middle or mids and you turn that up, that turns the middle of your frequency up. And if it says treble, that turns your highs up, your high frequencies. Now, when I say frequency, what do I mean by that? That's just a fancy word that means how fast the sound is vibrating per second. A lower frequency or bass frequencies vibrate slower, like 100 times per second. Whereas the higher frequencies could be vibrating 5,000 times per second or five kilohertz. So we'd say 5,000 hertz or five kilohertz, it means the same thing. And that is like your sibilance. That sound right there, that bright sound, that's five around 5,000 hertz or five kilohertz, 5,000 vibrations per second. So that's what I mean by frequencies. So on your amp, if you have like a Fender Champion 20 or a Fender Champion 40, it'll just say bass and treble. And the bass knob jacks up the lower frequencies and the treble knob jacks up the higher frequencies. If you have something like the Orange Crush 20, it has three knobs, which I personally love. It has the bass knob, which is your lower frequencies, your mids to get that middle boost or treble. Okay, so just think of it this way. EQ knobs are volume knobs for specific sounds. Now I wanna demonstrate this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm starting with my EQ all the way down on all the channels. So this is what it sounds like. Now watch, I'm gonna turn up just the treble knob. Here's just the treble knob all the way up. Listen to the difference. I'm gonna turn that back down. Now here's the mids knob. Now they're all on zero. Now the mids knob is all the way up. Listen to the difference now. Now I'm gonna turn the mids knob all the way down and I'm gonna turn the bass knob all the way up. So now treble basically is all the way off. Mids are all the way off. Here's the bass. Now let's talk about some rules to help you use EQ. One of the best rules I was ever taught when using any kind of mixing sound, but especially EQ, is use your ears. <laughs> I know that's crazy. Here's another way to put it though. If it sounds good, it is good. Because whenever you get into stuff like this, it's possible to just get your focus off the sound and into the gear, into the schematics, into the science of it. Remember, the science should serve the sound. The technique should help you get the sound that you want. The sound shouldn't be slaved to the technique. The technique should be slaved to the sound because it's always about what you hear. What's the sound that you want? Okay. So listen, you know, is it bright? Is it dark? Is it too bright? Is it too muddy? Which is usually the lower uh, mids or the low reaches like 400 Hertz. So what is it that you're listening for? Use your ears. If it sounds good, it is good. But now let me get even more specific. Here's a rule that I was taught when using EQ that's so important. And the rule is this cut before boost. So what does that mean? Cut means to turn it down. The instinct is if it's a dark sound, we want to just turn the treble up all automatically, just boost the treble. Well, the problem is if you're getting up towards eight, nine, 10, you've all of a sudden have no more room to go. What happens if you don't have any more room to go? Well, if you start by cutting first, if it's a muddy sound, we'll try cutting the bass, turn the bass down a little bit, turn the mids down a little bit, then turn the treble up. And let's experiment with this. So let's say we've got this guitar sound. And let's say I want it brighter, really chimey. Well, I could just turn the treble up, but let's try turning the bass and the mids down first. I didn't touch the treble knob. So I cut first. Now let's boost the treble. So 
So there you go, it's getting brighter. And now, because I cut before I boost, I don't have everything up around seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. It's all really lower, so I have plenty of room to increase the treble. I turned it up a little bit more. So cutting before you boost gives you more headroom, so you're not hitting the top, because the amp only goes up to 10. Unless it goes up to 11, these only go up to 10. So if you've already got it up high and you're trying to boost, 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 you run out of headroom. You don't have no more room. But if you cut a little bit first and you're like, it's kind of muddy, I'm gonna cut the low and the mids down maybe a little bit. And then you can boost the treble up just a little and get the same effect. But always use rule number one as your guiding principle. Use your ears. If it sounds good, it is good. If you don't have to do much and you've got the sound, that's great. Or if you just boost the treble a little bit and you get the sound, that's fantastic. Another quick side note, cutting before you boost is especially handy in the mixing world. So let's say you're recording at home and you're recording a small band. You've got some guitar tracks, a bass track, some vocals, some drums, and you have maybe some keyboards. All of those instruments add up. We call that tracks. And so if you're instantly always grabbing your EQ on every channel, on the drums, on the bass, on the keyboards, if you're always boosting first, you're adding volume all across your mix and it's gonna get out of hand. Soon you're gonna run out of space. Because remember, a mix is a small space, okay? So a mix, just think of it this way. You only have a certain amount. You only have to the left side of your, and right side of your speakers and you only have so much volume that you can do before it starts to distort. So the more you fill that up with EQ boosts, you run out of room for everything else. Whereas if you hear a sound and it's muddy and you cut down the bass and mid frequencies before you boost the highs, that might get you sound that you want without adding too much volume. Because remember, EQ is volume. So every time you boost the EQ, you're adding volume and you're running out of mixing room. So I just wanted to make that point. That might not apply to you if you're just playing in your bedroom, but if you're mixing, it is gonna be a big deal. So, if you like that little tip, cutting before you boost, please give me a like and drop me a comment below. Also, if you have any questions about EQ, drop me a comment below and just, just ask me. Look under question of the day and give me a comment down there. I would love to help you out. And if you love this amp, by the way, in the description section below where it says buy now, if you click there, it takes you to Amazon. I am an Amazon affiliate. And if you buy this at no extra charge to you, you, I get a little commission. It's just one way I support this channel and I really appreciate it. And I love this amp. The Orange Crush 20 is a fantastic amp. Now, if you want some more tutorials about, let's say gain and volume, just click right here. If you'd like to know more about the Crush 20, click right here. And as always, subscribe and hit the bell. When you hit the bell, you'll get notifications when I come out with more reviews and techniques like this. I would love to share them with you. Thank you for your time. God bless. Have a great day. Bye.